What is up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Panthers Nation Network. I'm alongside, of course, Sean Tees and JB. We're here at Locker Room Charlotte. Jason, of course, uh, tuning in from afar. But uh, it doesn't really matter because, again, we are 0-5 to start of the year. It has not happened since the days of Jimmy Clausen. Jesus Christ. Yeah, it's, I mean, I kinda have, it kind of feels like where we are right now, man. We're trying to figure out where we are as a team. We lack talent in a lot of places right now. I mean, I can at least say we have a quarterback that we think we want to move forward with. So, I mean, that's a bright side. But right now, this I mean, there's no positives to be in this bad right about now. Yeah, because it's not going to go like when we had Jimmy Clausen. You know, you draft Jimmy Clausen the year before thinking that's going to be your next guy. He comes out. It's not that. Puts you in a position to get Cam Newton. Well, we're not going to get the number one overall pick this year, barring some unforeseen massive trade that would that would depress me to my very core. We're not getting the chance to get a guy like Hale Williams next year. So, yeah, this is our guy, for better or worse. JB, give us a little bit of your quick thoughts uh, just on the state of the franchise right now. Well, I, it doesn't look good. Um, I think we can all agree that we don't have the coach we wanted. Um, that's obvious. Um, we do have a quarterback that does show promise. I do agree with you, Shantice, but – I'm hoping it's not all for naught and we end up damaging him like the commanders did RG3 and and we've seen this time this time and time again. So I'm the state of the union on 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 the Carolina Panthers for me is non-existent right now. We got a lot of things to do internally. Yeah, I think that there's a lot that needs to be kind of addressed. There's a lot of of conversations that need to be had about where is where's it all going wrong. That's something the biggest thing for me right now. I mean, like you saw Again, in those drives last week, either the later half of the game where they still hadn't subbed their guys out, or even the second or third drive of the game where we were able to put up points and actually have a drive field. The best drive was what we had talked about, those dynamic plays. And who got the ball in the red zone to facilitate the touchdown? LaVisca Chanel. You heard it here. We put it up on our Instagram page. He needs to get in here and get into the plays. JB said it before anybody else thought of it. He's got to be there. So I don't understand then where the next drives offensively where, what happened? I don't get it. I think their loyalty to trying to keep Miles Sanders in the group, keep Miles Sanders in the in in the mix, it's kind of, it's kind of come back to bite them, and it's kind of, it's come back to bite them. I mean, you can think about like the fact that they paid them so much money. I think they're trying to make sure this thing works out, or trying to see if it'll pan out. But to this point, but we've seen we've clearly seen that he's not the answer at running back. No, going with a combo of Chuba and Lavisca. And I even think that Raheem Blasher should should be activated for the first time this season and get some touches. Like I've seen enough of Miles Sanders, bro. Like between the fumbles and the lack of explosion, and seemingly mi and seemingly missing a lot of open holes. That like, you saw the one in the first quarter, where if he simply cuts it back to the left. And this isn't the first time he's done that either. This is like two or three weeks now of him doing this. And I don't want to hear, oh, well, you don't know what's going on in, in real time. You can't tell what he's seeing. Them. No, I'm sorry. Like, that's Pop Warner stuff. That that hole was big enough for a truck to drive through. You can see that. You know it's there. And he's not supposed – he's not a north-south running back. He's an east-to-west guy. His whole career has been made off of changing directions and playing off of that chaos. So you can't tell me that he's not built for it. That's why we brought him in here, to be that dynamic kind of guy – and then he's not even being impactful on other plays. Like when we run screen plays, they're not with Miles Sanders. And we'll get to the screen plays in a second. But you're right. I think there's like it's not only a lack of execution in terms of your your, your mindset or your philosophy, but there are key guys that are seeing zero touches or having zero impact. We'll talk about it real quick. I mean, I can name off a few. The biggest thing, the most jarring thing for me, where in the world was Terrace Marshall? I, to not play a single snap? And then for for him to say what he said after the fact, I haven't been one of the guys to be like, yo, this is like Matt Rule 2.0, but that was not a good response. Well, let's be honest. I mean, we got we to gotta dial this all the way back. We haven't seen any sort of correlation to bring in Terrace Marshall along to where in the world is Hayden Hurst. I mean, he's like, where's Waldo to me? Um, Miles Sanders, that's a whole other conversation in that I think we've talked about this over and over again. He doesn't fit our offense. He doesn't fit what we're trying to do. I think we thought he was going to be what he was in Philly. The one thing is we don't have the Philly line and we don't have the schematics to really facilitate the type of runner he is. Um, you know, to me, from an offensive side and standpoint, we have a huge deficiency from the collaboration that's happening to what's translating on the field. And we said it week in and week out. 
Frank, if you're calling the plays, I don't think you're calling what you and Thomas Brown collaborated on. I'm going to be 100% honest. I don't think that what I think Thomas Brown brings to the organization, I don't think that that's what we're seeing out on the field, point blank. I think whatever it is that you quote unquote are collaborating on, I don't think you're really listening to what we need to be doing. And it's obvious in some of the later parts of the game when you see Bryce kind of open up a little bit and he feels more comfortable. And maybe that's something that Thomas Brown drew up that you finally called in the waning hours of our losses that we've been having. Um, but it's, it's truly embarrassing with the amount of quote unquote weapons we had, right? DJ Chark and Adam Thielen aren't the only two. Mingo, I mean, he's coming along, but he's still, still some question marks there as well. Yeah, I think to touch on your Miles Sanders point, that's the most aggravating part is that throughout the entire offseason, you know, it was kind of a question mark of where he was, how he was coming along, both, you know, in his health and in his, you know, assimilation with the offense. And he kept saying, and the staff kept saying, well, he's the one that we don't need to worry about. You know, this offense is very Steichen-esque. It's very Frank Reich-esque. It's very, you know, similar to what he's played and what systems he's been with, especially with Deuce Daly coming in. And he's been the biggest disappointment in that regard. He was the first free agent to be signed in this period. And everyone was like, whoa, I, I think either him or Hayden Hurst, one of the two, if not, right. if not days apart, you know, I, I believe it was Miles Sanders, but I think that's been the most aggravating part is this was like the, the start of your new kind of wave, what you were going with. This was saying, okay, we're not going to just stick with the guys that we have. We're going to try to advance and get quote unquote better guys, which is not something we had done in years past. And then for him to just say all this stuff about, you know, Oh, I, I'm like, I'm moving along faster than everybody else. Like I'm getting able to get into it quicker. And then for this to be your output, it's, it's just ridiculous. Yeah, no, it, it's, it's definitely been disappointing. Um, uh... Seeing Chuba run, seeing how aggressive and how and how forceful you know he runs he runs with the football, more so what we like that more so from what we saw last year is more so what we think we thought we thought we were getting this year, and I think it simply needs to be a change. I think there's no shame in saying that this just isn't working with this guy. And again, it's, we're only five games into, into the year, but I can definitely still make the make the case that like the changes go need to go ahead and be made. Like if if he comes along later on in the season and he starts having success then fine. But at least for now, I need to see Chuba get more touches. I need, I need to see Visca more involved and more involved as well because you start to see more of the offense start to pick up as soon as those guys touch the ball. And I think going you know, I think going with that tempo also helps his offense out a whole lot, especially considering how long it takes him to get in and out of plays, get in plays. And it, it, you got to cut down on how – you got to cut down on your mistakes right now. And I think tempo is probably the best way to go and going with – the younger explosive guys is the, is, the, is the next wave as well. Yeah, I mean, we saw where, like, the, you know, no huddle offense was beneficial for the Panthers there in that second scoring drive or in that scoring drive and then later on in the game. But then you also see on the flip side that you talked about, it, there was the one of the, you know, kind of damning moments was in the switch from the first quarter to the second quarter. They had it at the end of the first quarter. They had it on the goal line. Or, I'm sorry, they had it on, like, with, like, a yard to go to get the first down, driving into the red zone. And they obviously it was when Andy Dalton, of course, came in for this, the QB sneak. Mm -hmm. You knew that was going to happen. You knew that was the play call. Like, boom, there you go. You got to go. And then they take it and they cannot get a playoff. Next, Andy Dalton's taking forever to come off. And they have about 14 seconds on the clock before they call a play. Now, they, I don't know if it was broadcast or on field, but something was up with the game clock because the game clock didn't reset the way it was supposed to. But either way, you had that entire break, that four minute, three minute media timeout to figure out what your first play from the first down was going to be. You knew you were going to get that first down. Or if you didn't, you at least need to prepare for the fact that you're either going to get it or not get it. And that caused the delay of game, or it caused us to have to burn that time out that we didn't need to burn. Mm. And then that just set the rest up for everything. So this, And that's been a constant problem for this team. And that's been something that we haven't been able to escape no matter the coaching staff, whether it was Rule, whether it was Wilkes, because that was still a problem with Wilkes, or a problem with Frank Reich. It's just been a big issue all around, and I do not understand. But like you were saying with Miles, it's not like you need to bench him. No. Just running back by committee. Like, that's what we had thought this was going to be from the get-go. You know, you say it's a wide receiver by committee. That's not happened. It's clearly just Adam Thielen. Right. That's it. That's the only guy. And, you know, props to him. He's been incredibly consistent week in and week out, and he's fighting for touchdowns that he doesn't need to fight for. He didn't need to fight for that touchdown there late mm -hmm. in the game. He did not need to put his body on the line like that. He could have taken from the one and let somebody, you know, barrel it in. But – God bless him. He threw his body out there to make sure he could get that extra yard for the touchdown. But none, none of this is being done by committee. And that's what's aggravating is that you said you didn't need a number one running back. You didn't need a number one wide receiver. DJ Moore, we had to let go, quote unquote, to get Bryce Young. You could have 
put somebody else up for him. McCaffrey had to go to get the capital, but the more in hindsight you look at it, like I'm looking at the capital and I'm like, damn. What are we what are we using that capital on? Like we got all that capital. What did we use it on? We got all that cap space. What are we using the cap space on? But we haven't gotten it. I mean, we haven't hit on any other free agencies that we've gotten. I don't think really, if you think about what Scott Fitter was brought, right? In terms of like this last offseason or in general? This last offseason. And and probably in general. I mean, who in general would you give a a double thumbs up to that's really killing it right now? Well. I was just talking to a friend. Well, okay. In terms of. And, and, okay, Louvu Louvu and Chanel, right? I think. We'll give them. I think it depends on. We'll give them that, but. I was giving the distinction of who bought out and then we still also fumbled the bag on it. Like if you think about it, like Fitter made some great moves, but then also did himself dirty by letting those moves get washed away. You know, Reddick, oh, my, like I'm saying, my, like, Foreman. yeah, Reddick, Foreman, Gilmore, yeah, Reddick you know, all those guys that he yeah, signed yeah, that were yeah, great okay. signings okay. that he just like, so I just yeah. didn't know what kind of metric you were talking about, whether the guys that were still no, on the no, team, because if it's guys still yeah, on the team, no, then Bozeman and Corbett, you know, other than Corbett's injury, Bozeman's been and Corbett have been impactful. They have but here's, the, here's the problem we have though. But here's the problem we have though. What has Federer done in the draft? Well, that I wait. That's I wait. That's like, your that twenty one like, class. We've got, we've got a huge issue. I mean, where's Jeremy Chin? Yeah. What? Where is Jeremy Chin well, on the field? Well, he's gonna be gone. I, but that's yeah. but like so it, squeeze everything Chin you get out gone, of him. You know, Burns is gone. Chin is gone. Burns will probably be gone. We're gonna end up having to do something with that. Uh, we're going to end up probably trying to trade up to get a first round. Let's just go ahead and suck it up. We're going to make a bad decision. Yeah, yeah. Um, we have we to. We need to sign him, but I think he, I don't think I don't think we're gonna I don't think we're gonna keep him. We're not gonna be. Able, and if I was Burns, to be honest with you, I wouldn't want to sign with us. Honestly, I mean, from being quite honest, he probably can go somewhere else, have way more success. They'll probably have another yes. edge opposite of him, so he's not the central guy because he may not. He's clearly just not a central guy. Like yeah. I mean, like, even like, like, even with Hassan Reddick as well. Like I, you know, even when, when Reddick started having his breakout years, it's somebody else on the other side of it that, that takes away that pressure. And there's just Justin Houston. We we were we were kind of expecting a lot of Justin Houston coming into the year. I feel like come, you know that, that just hasn't panned yeah. out. But I mean, like you said, the free agent signings from this year alone, all of those the guys that haven't hit the most that really that really killing us is Deshaun Williams and Shot Total. Yep. Those two not hitting, yeah. and our run defense being bottom ten in the league, that's what's really killing you right now because you can't even sustain. Yeah. The I, problem has still been for me, and I don't know what it, like, you know, the front office is on blast and on the hot seat. The head coaching staff, the coaching staff is on the hot seat for me, and whether it's the facilities, the training staff, or what have you, my my health and management staff is on the hot seat because I like for all the because if you look at these free agency signings. About 60% of them were brought on to be backups, to be depth pieces, which that's not good in and of itself. I'm not going to argue that that's a good strategy, but they were brought on. You got to talk about guys like Justin Houston, Deion Jones. Justin Houston was not supposed to be your foremost linebacker. He was supposed to be able to take the edge off, take the attention off, fill in as needed. But now with Kamu going down, with Luvu going down at times, Shaq out for the year, he's had to take a central role that he was not, not that he's not prepared for. He's an NFL linebacker, but we weren't trying to put him in that. I mean, Deion Jones got cut, put on the practice squad. And now he's back having to fill in because Marquise Haynes is out for the year. And we have to be able to put someone somewhere. Same with these guys like Troy Hill. I mean, he's been our best defensive back this season. Troy Hill's been all over the field. But so that's what I'm saying is like a lot of these guys, and then even the ones that were brought on to be starters, Xavier Woods, Vaughn Bell, Austin Corbett, get caught with the injury bug. And now they can't provide the impact they were brought on to do. So I think that's the, the horrible one-two punch of, we're bringing in guys that either aren't supposed to be starters that are now having to be put into starting roles or the guys that we're bringing in to be starters are getting sidelined and handicapped and now aren't able to, you know, perform the way they're supposed to. But I'll give it to you. Yeah, Shy Tuttle, you know, uh, Deshaun Williams, I, like those were big ones. Those weren't like mid-range, you know, mid of, middle of the pack kind of signings. Those were among your first few defensive pickups that were up there with guys like Von Bell and Eric Rowe that were supposed to have immediate impacts and kind of cement this defense for the holes that it had. And what I just, I don't understand. Like the only reason there was no run running attack this week is because Gibbs was out and Mon- they didn't need to run. Yeah, I, well, I mean, Montgomery still got off. Yeah. He did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He, he, ate our, he ate our lunch. I think, you know, from, from a defensive side of the ball, the injuries would be the biggest one, right? We lost JC Horn game one. 
I mean, let's not let's not miss word. That that totally disrupts that secondary all the way around. Shaq goes down week three. Yeah. Week two. Week, no, week, 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 week one. I thought Shaq went no. Week two. It was like week. No, it was, it was the week Saints two. game. Yeah, the Saints game. Yeah. So it's week two. He's gone. Season ending. So I mean, you lose two of your captains in in that in in the trenches. So that's hard to come back from. On top of that, you don't even go after and sign Brian Burns when you could have. And that's so now you're now you're three. Now you got two who are injured, one who's disgruntled, and then you bring in Dante Jackson who just got injured. But we all know him and C.J. Henderson have been the liability brothers all year on deep plays. And so I think that that's that's something we have to really really investigate and we have to re, really re, you know, relook at. I think also with that too. Our identity is gone. We have no identity on either side of the ball right now. I think that we're really struggling in that place. The offense doesn't the offense doesn't get get after it. Bryce is obviously struggling. Um, you know, he's having a huge issue with whatever it is that they're trying to do, whether they're trying to hold him back to keep him from killing themselves, or whether he's not progressing fast enough in the offense and he's not picking up on it. I don't know which one it is, but to me it seems like the previous, not the latter. I think we we're handcuffing him too much. We're not letting him get out to do what he needs to do. And I don't know why we haven't done bootlegs. Maybe it's because they know we don't have a line. But if you looked at last night, I've been saying it all year. I don't know why we don't have a fullback in the backfield to help with the blocking. I don't know why we don't have another tight end on the other side of Icky. I don't know why we're not doing the things you see the 49ers do. You see the Bengals do. You see all these other teams doing it, and they're being successful with it. And we are just refusing to adopt these sort of offenses and these sort of schemes. It is beyond me why we haven't done any of this to protect Bryce and to make us a more efficient offense. Yeah, that's, a, that's another thing, too. I mean, I guess watching how bad I'm watching Bryce struggle for the majority of games until the end. It's not it's not until these games are almost out of reach until I start to see Bryce play with a little bit more freedom. Like, the game is over. I don't – we're not winning anyway. Let me just let me just let it loose. I – I truly wonder what it is that's gonna that's happening. I can say I understand people's trepidation about Bryce right now because I am watching the other rookies play with a little bit more freedom and not to say obviously the situations are different, but there is a sense of like I don't see Bryce looks very uncomfortable. It, the game looks too fast. He moves like he's very unsure of so himself. Even when he tries to step up in the pocket, when he tries to scramble, I don't see the the playmaking. The like like I don't see any of that guy. That I see out of the guys. Um, Oh, the guy that we saw at Bama last year. I don't see – I haven't seen that yet. I see glimpses of it here and there, and he'll make a throw or two that's like, yeah, like that's a big-time throw. But for a duration of a game, I don't – there's too many lapses where I just don't see anything. And I think that's the part where I'm like, all right, how long do I keep praising them for the, for the things that we see late in games or in certain spots until we need to see it for a full game? We need to see this constructed well from an offensive standpoint of – all right, it starts out this way. It goes this way. All right, bam, all right, boom. By the time we get to the fourth quarter, all right, can we still see that same performance? Can we get that performance in the first half? Like, can we can I see any semblance of, of that old Bryce? But I, I, it's not on him. I think it's more so just, um, I don't know who this is. I don't, I don't know who's to say this is on right now because I'm only seeing one guy make plays for us. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I truly, I don't have an answer for this right now. Yeah, it's just, it's... <laughs> It's just problems all around. You talk about not running the bootleg because we don't have a line to, but that's the precise reason why you run the bootleg is because you don't have an offensive line that it's going to give you enough time in the pocket so you get him outside of the pocket. Like you said, that's what you're supposed to do, and you really hit the nail on the head. It's not like these are foreign concepts. I mean, you look at Houston right now doing the pretty much the exact same stuff. They're in the same situation. It, and that's what makes it more damning is that it, it's not like Houston has had a long tenured head coaching staff, head coach and coaching staff to facilitate the success that CJ Stroud has had. It's not like they have a cemented offensive front and weapons. You can't tell me that the weapons that he has are marginally better than what we have here. Like in terms of output, obviously they've done a lot more tank Dell's looking like he's, you know, the next guy and he's got wide receivers that are at least able to facilitate and same with the running back room but it's not like it's night and day compared to what the panthers have and even on the defensive side of the ball they might be healthier but they're still not as effective they're not that much more effective to where i give it you know pause so that's the really annoying part is that you see it happening right here cj stroud and especially because cj stroud was deemed as the guy that wouldn't be able to mentally handle this kind of stuff 
That was his. That was the whole argument against him. He failed on the test. Or he did really bad on the test. So that means he won't be able to adapt and to assimilate into the things that you want to do as an NFL head coach. And that's why Bryce Young was brought on. I agree with you. I don't think he's to blame. He's not, but he's also not to be praised. Like no. I'm not giving him his flowers for doing his job. No. I, 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 I'm not no. expecting. You know, I didn't expect the world of him this year. Because I didn't think he needed to play like Superman. That was the whole thing. He didn't need to be Cam Newton because we were supposed to provide this team around him to allow him to be comfortable and to play like he did at Alabama. That's the whole thing is that at Alabama, he was just facilitating. He was the point guard. He was spreading the love around, spreading the ball, allowing people to be successful. Here he's having to play like Superman, like Cam Newton. And that's not in his pedigree. And it shouldn't have to be. Right. Well, I mean, I think, I think too, you know, I'm, I've thought about this a lot since yesterday. He's starting off the way Tua started off. Yeah. Right. He's coming in, getting beat to hell by whatever team wants to come in and, and, and impose their will. It wasn't until you saw Tua get a coach that truly believed in him and used his, use what he is as his strength to perpetuate what that offense can ultimately dictate, let alone surround him with two of the best wide receivers we'll probably ever see in a duo. Yeah, that don't hurt. Side of the Mason Dixon and forever. Right. So, but before then, even, I mean, you even saw last year, just the, just the change in the nuance in the way Tua was approaching the game. And I think what you're talking to Shantice is exactly what I was saying in that not only does he look uncomfortable, but it almost looks like he's not even bought into the system. Right. So he's not even bought into what they're telling him to do, which means that's a lack of trust. And that lack of trust is going to breed much more into a, a rollover into something much bigger in years to come if we don't correct it now. Part of me is worried that he's, he's going to lose. No, I was gonna, he's going to lose his confidence. I was going to say, ultimately, he's well, going to lose his confidence. Part of me is worried that he's just too nice of a damn guy to speak up and say, hey, this stuff that we're doing is not what we're supposed to be doing. Part of me is a little worried that he might have more football sense than the coaching staff does, and he might – because if I'm coming from Alabama and the way that that offense is run, I'm not looking at this offense and going, this is what we should be doing. Right, and, he, and you start looking at even how we approached Cam when he came into the league. We did adjust the game to what he did well. Yeah. That's and what you're I, supposed to do. And yeah. I haven't seen that happen at all with Bryce. I mean, we saw Cam Newton openly argue with Rivera on the field at a couple of times saying, I'm not going to do what this, what you want me to do. I'm going to run this play. I, I think that th it, like, you know, that was a big reason, like they said, that fourth down or that second, that first down that it's gotten down to the wire. I mean, hell, that could be why it's coming down to the very few last seconds because he might be trying to say, Hey, I got to no. know what if That's he's got to. I'm no, I'm it. saying like he's arguing with like I have a better look here. Like I think we should do this. He's trying to call audibles. Have we seen oh. him call any audibles? Have we seen him change up the game at all at the line of scrimmage? Maybe, maybe a handful of times in the first five games. I haven't seen him do it like. And if you look at if you look at his tape from Alabama, that was again one of his pe that was his pedigree to be able to change the game at the line of scrimmage. And not only that, but call audibles mid play. Bryce is very big at that. Right. Well, you have to wonder how much freedom they're giving them at the line of scrimmage. They're not. As well. I don't like, think. How, like how many plays right. are you sending them out there with right. that you can that you can check to? So, I don't. I won't necessarily put that on him. And again, oh, I think the biggest difference is he went from having those cue cards at Bama to having to have a whole play, yeah, be sent in through a, a sent in through, through through the headphones, like with the, through that microphone and, and the helmet. And um, that does take a minute. That I I do understand the adjustment oh, yeah. period there with with, with that. Um. But it, it just it doesn't look cohesive right now. It, it just I just I just can't imagine that they went into an off season thinking that these were the guys that we needed to roll with. And, I, and again, I'm telling you, the guy that I'm most, I'm probably the most disappointed in is DJ Chark. Like that needed to work badly because if, if if Chark were when he was injured, Shantice, we knew Shantice, we knew him coming in though. Oh, we knew he was damaged goods. We like, we he was, he was, he was we, he's we definitely the Jason Horn of the offense. Like he's known. To go down mid season and not not return for a whole season. That's but that's, that's what his that's what that's made it all the worst. That's, that's what made it all the worst to go in that knowing. It's like when we drafted. Oh no questions. It's like when we drafted. Um, oh, what's his face? A few years back, the the lineman. 
Greg Little. It's like we drafted Greg Little thinking that was going to be your next guy, mm. and then he had just come off of a torn ACL out the entire year, and then what happens in that season? He tears his ACL, and you're like, wow, we didn't see that coming. Yeah. Like so that that the DJ Chark one that was another one. If you go back in the tape, like we were optimistic, but we all knew we were worried that that was like this is who you're going at is this for your number one guy. Like yeah. and honestly, the offense is struggling because he hasn't he hasn't worked. He's supposed to be your big. He was touted as the big play guy from the beginning. Uh, the, uh, <laughs> and I'm telling you, if he can't do it, then roll with Smith. It's roll with Smith Marset. Because at the very least he has a look, he has a little bit of speed, right? And just see what see what the kid can do. Because to this point, you're we've done what five. we always do. We've done what we always do, man. We bargain hunt to try to fill our team. But that's what we always do. We always bargain hunt. But this was the like that was what was so different about this year. It wasn't like yeah, Thielen was a bit on the older side, but like Miles Sanders, DJ, DJ Chark, Hayden Hurst, these were like in their quote unquote prime guys that you were trying to flip your offense with. And yeah, they had their question marks per se. Hayden Hurst, you know, in terms of his output, he had been off of the last two seasons. That since season in Cincinnati doesn't happen, he's not getting a deal like that. But right. Cincinnati happens and he proves his prowess, which as Gamecocks, we all knew was there. We, and we were hoping it was going to pan out somewhere. And I still think it is there. They're just not using him. That's what's really aggravating is, again, Frank Reich is supposed to be a tight end heavy guy. And like you said, we're seeing zero tight end packages. We're seeing tight ends going out there just to do nothing. We finally saw Tommy Tremble for the first time ever. Like, cool. And that was a great play on that pass and that touchdown, but it was still aggravating. And then uh, just to not see Hayden Hurst, especially after you saw how good the connection was week one. That's what really aggravates me about that is that Hayden Hurst had an impact on the field week one. He caught the first damn touchdown Bryce Young ever threw. So I don't understand where, like, you start to dial him back. He he was he's been the only consistently healthy guy you've had since the offseason started. He's been there for the whole thing. Miles Sanders had his issues. DJ Chark has had his issues. Jonathan Mingo's had his issues. And I think that's another thing. Not establishing. No, so here's the here's the. No, go ahead, go ahead, finish. That, uh, so finish I think not esta- I got a question about that. I think not establishing your number two watt, your 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 second round pick, who yeah was supposed to be a bit of a project, but still not even trying to. You're not like, and it's not like you're putting guys above him because TMJ's not getting reps. DJ Chark's injured, so you're still not even when he's on the field. You're not prioritizing Mingo. I started to see a little bit of it this week. You did. I did start to see some flashes. I'm like, okay. Get them going a little bit. Let's see. We gotta lean on that. Yeah, we we do have to do. We do have to lean more on them. I, again, I go with the young guys. Stop. I, I'm. I've seen yeah. enough of the guys that have been in the league for six, seven years and could never stay consistent. Like I, I'm, I'm, I'm cool with Char. I'm cool off of Char. I do want to see more of Hayden Hurst because there is potential there. We have seen it work at times. So I mean, you do have to just whether it's game planning or what that has to. It has to be emphasized to Bryce. Like, hey, get Hayden Hurst going. If you get Hayden Hurst and Thielen going in the same game, I think you got a shot. I think that should that, that's going to be a. Well, here's the chance. question I have. I mean, it goes back to who's calling the plays and what is he really calling? What kind of collaboration is really happening? I, I'm finding it really hard to believe that they collab to this level and that's what we see on the field. Something's not translate. Somebody got to tell me something else. Something's not translating from the meeting room to what's on the field. Something. Somebody's got to tell me something different because. I don't think I saw the Rams look this way. No. Even when McVay was going through his mental collapse and Thomas Brown was stepping in and they had people there working, I still didn't see the Rams look this bad. No. Not from an offensive perspective. No. Right? And Cooper Cup was hurt and they had several injuries. Cam Akers was hurt. Like, we're not going to play like they did. They were full throttle go, right, when this was happening, when Sean McVay was going through his issue. So if Reich is like the end all to be all, and he's collaborating with Thomas Brown along with McCown and whoever else. Where is are y'all signing off on these plays? That's, y'all signing off on these packages? Because I don't think that that's it. Doesn't it looks stale to me? It looks very 1990-ish. And it's more aggravating when you see the coaches coming off of that same coaching tree, 
in other areas at head coaching or offensive coordinator positions from what we have here at Thomas Brown and the pieces of what we have are being utilized the way they're supposed to be. You see, you know, M Mostert and a, a chain and, and a chain, you know, in, in Miami going off, being used the way we were told Miles Sanders was going to be used, being to used the way we said Chuba Hubbard was going to be used. I mean, a chain's getting a 75 yard run straight up the sidelines, up the hash marks. And Mostert's been a menace inside of the red zone. And then you look at guy, you know, you look at, you look at the 49ers and Shanahan's offense and you see how like we talked about LaVisca being used like Debo, how they use in conjunction, they use McCaffrey, Debo and Kittle without you literally they did it in one play without missing a beat. And they were able to do so. And they continue like, there's no reason in my mind other than just maybe a 10% to 20% difference in talent that you can't use Hayden Hurst the same way they use George Kittle. There's no, there's no reason in my mind why you can't use them the same way. Same with LaVisca and Debo. If the blueprint's there. Yeah. I, I, again, melding the talent has seemed to be a problem. Like it, it, it really feels like we only have one guy that we can feed per play. There's no other options, and there's nowhere, there's nowhere else for the ball. Well, they've expressed that, that they've yeah. had plays where Adam Thielen is the only person supposed to get it. So when you talk about how many plays are they sending out to Bryce, I think they're sending out one play to him yeah. with a hot route. And a check down. And that's the whole thing. I, I That's really what it's gotten to me when I'm watching this offense. Yeah, that's what I see too. I mean, I guess that, that may be the bit of the McVay offense where you see one guy dominate from the receiver position and Adam Thielen. That may be it. Like, that may be what the collaboration is at but, this point. Cause but that, even, cause, cause even to this point. No, I, no I'm no, i disagreeing. I'm disagreeing. I'm disagreeing. Oh, no, no. I'm, I, I would say this. You got I'm I'm I'm, oh, I'm great. BS. I'm just oh, saying. I was about to say. <laughs> okay. Right. I was getting ready. No, I'm BS. I'm, no, because I, I was saying last I'm night. I'm saying like that. Even in the chat that may last be night. the bit of the McVay offense we see is that oh, we only got Adam Thielen, so this is all you get. That's it. Nothing else. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> Which would have worked up until Puka <laughs> and Cooper Cup are putting up twenty points in fantasy in the same night. <laughs> right. Right. But I was saying like last night in the chat, like the San Francisco 49ers have one of the most potent offenses in the league. And they're doing exactly what we've been talking about on this show. They're using their fullback. They're using their tight end. They're using Debo and all kind of Debo S ways. Christian McCaffrey. I mean, I get sick every time he touches the ball, but I get happy at the same time to see my man, Steve Wilkes shut out the Cowboys last night. I'm sitting here pounding my chest and I was like, Oh, he's not a Panther anymore. My bad. Shouldn't do that out loud. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that, you know, that you see these teams who are being successful with, to your point, Jack, about 10 to 20 percent more talent, but the actual schemes are working. So what makes you think that couldn't work for us with what we've got in house? Giovanni Ricci should be a fullback on every play. I I, I don't I don't know why he's not out there bulldozing somebody. We wasted I mean, a roster spot on him. Worst? I don't understand why we wasted wasted a roster spot on him and another tight end. I don't care. Sullivan. Play him. That's what Play I'm him. saying. So if you're gonna waste it, use it. Chenault, put him at fullback. Help him block, slide off a block. Put somebody next to Icky. I don't give a darn who it is. You can go find Cousin Jeffro down in Bessemer City to come sit next to Icky. Put somebody next to him. Okay? Let's, 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 let's do something. We've got to do something because this is becoming absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. No, that's absolutely correct, though. I mean, that's, that's the thing, though. Um... Utilizing the guy, the talent that's in the room, and we saw that last at the end of last year. Like that's the issue I think a lot of us are having. Is like, yes, this can work if you use it to your advantage. Like, all right, you kept five tight ends, use them. Like, to, to your point, Jason, you got to use them, got to utilize them, got to add an extra blockers out there. If you want to be a run heavy group or you want to be a physical running team, you probably gonna need a fullback back there to start leading the way. You know what I'm saying? But and that's what and and you can help refresh my memory of it and maybe just from the amount of sheer like content that was put out and the amount of pressures that I've had to go to, and it's a problem that I still can't remember. It might just be the ADHD. What role was presented? What was our offensive scheme presented to be? What was going to be our our calling card on offense? Can anyone remember what they came out and said? This is going to be our philosophy on Wait, offense. They said, "Are you talking pre preseason? Pre preseason? Or post postseason?" Um, post preseason, if it's what are we talking? Because hold on, hold on, time out. Preseason, it was oh, we're not letting all our cats out the bag. Yes, exactly. We got stuff. We got exactly. stuff in store. So then, post preseason, okay. okay. tell me what our philosophy was. Post preseason was pitched to be. It's called train wreck. It's called train wreck. That's what our. That's what. That's what. Our, that's what it is. Well, at train wreck. At least pre preseason, 
I remember in the presser, he said <laughs> it was going to be fast, explosive, yep. defense. We were going to play physical, tough. I'm talking offense. Or, like, or just, or just offense. With fat, well, it was, gonna, it was supposed to be fast and explosive, which were neither. Yeah, was, which is just very, <laughs> very – very appropriately arbitrary responses to that you can easily you know cater to we didn't come out oh we're going to be a run heavy team you know we're going to be a pass heavy team we're going to be a west coast offense we're going to be a the, all we got was the comparisons to steichen esque offenses now what thing i thought one thing that i thought we all initially thought was that like we probably should be more of a run heavy group because we don't have we don't have the horses on the outside to just go crazy and pass yeah. about 30 40 times a game we're going to need to run the ball for bryce just, just to solidify some things and we can't do it which is what you should do for any r- rookie quarterback as any it is rookie quarterback you give them a run game give them a tight end that's supposed to help them get through that first year for you know you got five you can run a two tight end set it ain't that hard you got five take one i think, I think just the put one over here as a decoy i don't care i don't even care if ian thomas is over here as a decoy because you threw it to him more times he's ever got thrown to in the last five years so put him over there as a decoy because they think we're gonna throw to him and put Hayden Hurst over here. Better yet, put LaVisca Chanel as a as a as a fullback, put Miles Sanders as a tailback, and make them split out different directions. You got two options for Bryce. I don't understand why we can see this. I don't understand how other teams can see this. And for some odd reason, Frank Reich is saying, I think it's best for me to call the play. I just like I you, you had one more chance with the screens. I, you had no more chances. You had one more chance. <laughs> idea. I, I, you, did, you didn't really. You had no more chances. I said it I said it here last week. You had no more chances. But after the Vikings won, it didn't turn into a turnover. It was just a stupid play call in the red zone. Right. And I thought that was going to be enough to say, all right, you know what? Let's dial back the screens. Let's say let's not do this again because we don't. it's not working. Now you have quite literally caused a turnover and touchdown off of a screen play. Like it, it, it has happened. So th- if th- if you, I, I, I swear, I swear, I, I, if you come out next week against the Dolphins and you run another screenplay, I, I'm I, I'm going to lose my mind. It's the most, like, just sit down or bend over play in the NFL. It is just, ex- <laughs> it's expressing to the other team, we don't have the ability to push the ball downfield, so we're going to send three 300-pound guys in front of our guy because he can't create space in open field and hope that something works. It's the equivalent to running the triple option in high school, bro. Like, that's the, like, when you ain't got no athletes on the field. It's the it's the equivalent to running the holy roller in high school. Like, I do not understand why. It, it, when it works, it works. When it has when you got guys like Debo Samuel and guys that are and or the Lions running the freaking flea flicker reverses to get a touchdown downfield. Like, when you have... It's yeah. it's used in a playground sense when you have the weapons to do a, more than what you need to do. The guys that can score unconventionally because they've been scoring conventionally. We can't even score conventionally. Stop trying to score in unconventional ways. It's just it's pointless. And it like you said, deal. you need to give up, swallow your pride, and say this thing that we're trying to do is not working. Yeah, my goal is we don't let 70 points get scored on us. That's my goal. That's, that's we, crazy. If we can that's only get 45 or 50 points scored on us, I'm, I swear I'm calling you guys up with a picture of me popping a bottle. I promise you. If we can get if we can get somewhere within a 30-point range of, winning, of, of losing, I'm going to feel pretty good about our chances. Other than that, I have no, I have no kind of umph about this weekend other than here's another hot ale I'm going to be served up on a Sunday. But I will say this right, right quick. I would like to get you guys' opinion of, I had this conversation with my son and my best friend. What are the five organizations right now? We said today, walked in tomorrow, Tepper was like, fit, you're out of here. What are the five organizations you would look to to pull your next GM from? Hmm. Five. You don't have to answer it now. You can think about oh, it. I'm going to come back to it in a little I, bit. I, 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 I'm going to give you a little bit. I want y'all to kind of soak that in real quick because I'd be very interested. I've got my five, but, and I've got my reasons behind my five. Hmm. But just let that soak in and marinate in your soul a little bit because um, we're going to be doing this probably very, very soon by coming out of the bye week if we 0-8. I'll, I'll talk about it because the one thing, 
one thing that Panther Twitter does, Panther Twitter is very toxic, but it is also very funny at times. And I've loved the tweets that are like, yeah, and we have to go, you know, when rank, uh, Reich ends up getting fired, I know this great DC out of San Francisco that we should really look at for our head coaching job. Like he's, <laughs> he's done, not coming back. He, I know, but he's it's they're all jokes. Back. Cause then they're like, you know, when they had the stuff about trying to trade for a number one wide out, they were like, well, you know, the bears have a number one wide out that we could send probably like a first rounder for, or like, you know, we could trade burns and for DJ Moore and a first round pick. Like that seems like who says no. Right. And that stuff kills me because it's so like, yeah. Like why did we, we, we put ourselves in these positions. That's what's the most aggravating thing. It's one thing when your team sucks because of extrinsic factors, you know, outside issues, things that, you know, like the, the commanders for the longest time, they just, had literal federal issues as to why they were a bad program. I mean, you talk about the Browns just having almost a cursed level of mediocrity and it's just so aggravating because you had a team that was making the playoffs consistently. Couldn't even win to have five back to back 500 seasons still was winning the division multiple times in a row. And you had teams that were like, even in Cam's like downfall, he still made the playoffs one more time after the Super Bowl right. and was on path to do so before the Steelers game. I saw one tweet that it was like, uh, missing Carolina Panthers last seen Pittsburgh April or, or April, October whatever 2018 that was the last time the Panthers looked like the Panthers which if we're being completely honest but I was there but I was there for that no, I was there for that well, that's a problem that's, Jesus. come on Jason might be the bad he might be the bad <laughs> omen now JB you might be bringing that on to us no man Shandice, do you no, have man. your you have no, your I picks? actually I oh, oh for, oh, for hey, you, you got your five you keep going you got your five you keep going we'll keep thinking I'll give you my five. I'll give you my five. That way, y'all might get an idea. I got an idea. Well, I got two off the rip that, I, that, that popped into my head immediately. Who's your two? Who's your two off the rip, Shanti? Philly and San Fran. I got, if I got to pull a, a guy okay. from anywhere. Hold on. I was, I was going to. I like both of those. I was going like to go San Fran and Detroit. Great. I was thinking Detroit. San, San right. Fran so and Detroit. Got, so we all got San Fran. We all got, we all got San Fran. And Jack, I'm with you. San Fran and Detroit. Yeah, was, I'm with you on two. I'm with you on I two. I would go. My third one, my third one is Kansas City. Mm. My third one is Kansas City. We sustainability, sustainability only, sustainability only, and knowing how to build. They know how to build, dude. Like they a... lost Tyreek Hill. They lost Tyreek Hill, and they haven't missed a beat. I... You got you got the quarterback right though. Do you got the the court. Like, had they not gotten Mahomes right, and that was, if we're being honest, a complete coin flip. Yeah. There was no sure. like there was there were signs, but that could have. Like that could have been viewed as one of the worst pickups. I'll give them credit. I give them more credit for their defense. I, that's what defense. I would give them. Yeah, like because their offense is. But still, though, that's my third. That's yeah. my third no, organization. I, 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 scouting. I get somebody out there scouting. Get somebody definitely out there better than us. Him. They do scout well. I'll give them that because yeah. Tyreek Hill was not um, slated like that. Dude. See, it's crazy. And neither was um. And neither was Patrick Mahomes. And neither was Travis that. Kelsey. Was looking at Patrick like that. You know, it's... and neither was Travis Kelsey. That was an that was a brother. To Andy Reid thing, though. Andy Reid did that for a favor for Jason. Well, yeah, that's, we, we literally saw well the story. Documented. Nah, facts. Yeah, but, that's um... been well documented. So those are three. So we got San Fran. I've got Detroit. You've got Philly. And I I got Kansas City. Y'all don't agree with Kansas City. Well, no, I, I'm, fine. I'm fine with Kansas City. It's crazy that I would have said Seattle if Scott had not came from there. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, no, he's not wrong. Like, because generally, like, I mean, Tariq Woolen, uh, Kobe Bryant, Lock it, lock it, lock like they, it. Like they calf. hit on so many. Even guys. the guys that just got injured. If he hadn't gotten yeah. injured, um, yeah. like, it, it, and the, but the fact they were able to get Devin Witherspoon and Jackson that, Smith in the same draft, ridiculous. Like Jackson yeah. Smith's still struggling yeah. right now, but yeah. he'll figure it out. Well, that's why I said the Lions. You getting yeah. Jameer Gibbs, which they're just not using for whatever reason because like the they don't have to. Then they get Jack Campbell, yeah, the guys Campbell. we were all looking at. Then they got um another yeah. guy in the second Defensive. round. Defensive Hawkinson, Hawkinson. They got Hawkinson too, yeah. dude. Like. It's crazy. I'm not Hawkinson. What's the uh, Hutchinson. What's the Hutchinson? Yeah, no. I mean, Hutchinson's Hutchinson popped Hutchinson off. I mean, off. their their last miss was a Cuda, and that was where they're like, all right, no more of this. We're not doing this. He no really more. wasn't a big miss. And he, I about to say he's, he really not, he's not a having a miss. He just miss. wasn't he good just, in that system, right? At the time right. that they needed right, him. Right. But after uh, off, of, so I'm with you on Detroit. I say the same thing. Uh, same uh, thing. Off of that. Yeah. Hmm. Honestly, <laughs> keep it hot. Probably the Saints. I said Miami. You said Miami? Yeah. I said Miami. Miami, I don't know about because, because I'm gonna tell you why. I'm gonna tell you why though. I'm gonna tell you why. The main reason for Miami, they they've been able to find the formula of you and high performance athlete and made it work. But did that formula work? But with... That came from the coach. Well, that's what that I'm came saying. From the coach. So okay. Mike McDaniel. 
I guess we're. See what I'm saying? I guess it kind of changes your metrics if you're talking about the GM in terms of how he can evaluate talent from a coaching staff perspective, and what impact you put on the coaching staff on the talent, or how, what kind of talent he can bring in from the draft and free agency. Because, like you just said, there you made you kind of made your own point or made my point. They had that ability to bring in that young te- that intersection of young guys and explosive talent, but does that intersection work without Mike McDaniel's? But they also brought in Mike McDaniel's. GM work. So. That's what yeah. I'm saying. They also brought in Mike McDaniel. So it terms, if you're going full compass, you know, a, a full encompassing kind of thing. I mean, it's funny. If you look at them, like, I could find positives on pretty much every single, like, outside of, like, maybe five or six. Like, I could even look at, like, a team like the Commanders and be like, well, they're able to at least, you know, consi- like, they're able to at least find talent that works for them and stay in games. Mm-hmm. They might not be able to win and go over the hump, and that might be because of their coaching staff, but they've been able to at least draft to the point of – being able to take these guys like Sam Howell and actually make them look like good quarterbacks. At least with these Rivera teams, there's at least going to be contributors in those draft classes. That's what I'm saying. Like, for us. Yes. Jahan Dotson, Curtis Samuel. I mean, there's still guys that are... Like, but that's what I'm saying, though. But that's what I'm saying, though. Like, for me, Rivera is much more of a GM in that regard, if that makes sense, right? Because if you think back to even him and Marty Herney here, that was a lot of Rivera massaging who to oh, go yeah. get at times. I don't think right? I don't think Herney drafts choices. I don't think Herney drafts Luke Eakley. I don't think that happens without Ron Rivera. That, exact, there you go. Right. There, there you go. Uh, there's a lot of hits. Oh, I mean, yeah, because he that's was out of Boston great, College, like no, great. like we had film, but no one was like, "Oh, that's this guy's gonna be the best yeah. linebacker ever." Like, even think about a guy like Kwan Short. Exactly. Oh yeah, Kwan Short, absolutely. You know yeah, yeah, exactly. Like guys exactly, like that's that. That's what I'm saying. So. That's different when you start talking about up to your point of Miami, right? Because that full encompass situation, yeah. right? That's what I'm saying. Like for me, the GM has built that. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Brain trust that is, they've built that. The reason I said Kansas City is they've been able to sustain it. They've lost Tyreek. I give lost you that. Ju- I mean, they've lost so many different players. They've been able to plug and play. You know what's right? crazy? And then you talk about Detroit. You talk about Detroit building up from a, a rubble. Nothing. Yeah. And you start with the coach. If it ain't Dan Campbell, you don't get this. You don't get this Detroit no. Lions team. Far enough. You know, the crazy thing about Kansas City, especially last year, what they did defensively was kind of was similar to what we did in 2020 as far as drafting all defense. Yeah. All of those guys that contributed mm. contributed for them last year defensively were rookies. Like, I, there's about five or six of them that yeah. played, that started or played some type of significant yeah. role in that defense. And they play well. And yeah. crazy enough, like, yeah. Kansas City actually has a defense that can go – into a lot of these games against these high-powered offenses and hold their own to the point where I'm like, all right, it gives Mahomes a little bit more breathing room because the offense for Kansas City has not been the, to the same level yeah. that we've seen the past, let's say, about three, four seasons. Yeah. So the defense has definitely ro- definitely risen up, and that's based off of G- what the GM did in the draft and the free agency. But like I said, I could make arguments, you know, Am I- before, obviously, the – and I still think that the A.J. Brown is the only trade is the only reason that he's off that team. I would have said like John Robinson of the Titans before he did all that. He was able to build up rosters and maintain talent, bringing guys the way they're supposed to and bringing in. They had a, it took a couple times, but I mean, they still what he was coach of the year twice coming in off of off of hiring yeah. Mike Vrabel. Like that was Mike hiring Mike Vrabel was one of the best coaching hires I had seen in the last six, seven years in terms of how that team went from a borderline, you know, playoff our borderline division like second runner to winning the division constantly to being a game away from the super bowl and really just like a drive or two away from the super bowl and then he was now he wasn't able to maintain contracts as well that was one issue but then i'll even go for like if we're talking about drafting and free agency and picking up guys i would have gone with like the vikings i mean hell the vikings had they hadn't missed on the draft in a little while and they were able to get some guy, you know, and they were, and they were able to keep some of those teams. Now, like I'm saying, these are not like I'm just going and thinking off of as I'm going oh, through. Oh, sure, no, no, no. My last one, no, my last one, my last one is going to be the piece to resist arms. My last one is the Buffalo Bills. Let's go get Brandon Bean, bring them back home. Yeah. They've been able to draft well. They've been able to attract talent. I mean, that Stefan Diggs pull was 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 by was was by far one of the best I've ever seen. Oh yeah, um, they built through the draft. They've been able to build through the draft. I mean, let's let's take the quarterback out of out of the equation, right? That's a that's a win. But even before then, they were building. That's all they were missing. I mean, you know, that's that was that was what they needed to do. And Brandon Bean went out and got Josh Allen, right? Nobody was looking at Josh Allen to be drafted the way it wasn't for him to come into perform. And then, you know, for him to have the connection with the head coach and be able to have that rapport, you know, they are a good team. 
You know what I'm saying? McDermott had him here as a, in, in the scouting department when he was here in Carolina. So those are my five. And I think that if we are, Tepper, if you're listening, if we are looking for a GM, look at those five and try to find something out of there because you're not going to do it trying to do another retread GM. You've seen what you've done with a retread coach. So you got one retread coach that got fired. He needs to get fired now. You got a GM that came from a team. He's only had one, maybe two hits. And then you hired a brand new coach out of college. So you got, you know, you got to figure this out, bro. That's what I'm saying. Like, like in the next, the next high, yeah, you got to, you got to figure it out. That's what I'm saying for me right now. Like Frank Reich, again, from a head coaching perspective, like obviously a lot of issues, but again, I'm not ready to call the dogs on a, on a five week season. It's just, I'm not, I, you can't, like you can be frustrated. I think I, I just do not think that you can fire him this quickly. We, like I said, we let Matt rule. We gave oh. Matt rule so much leniency. Leniency. Oh, no, we didn't. Leniency. We, well, we didn't, but the organization did. <laughs> the or, the front of, we did not No, the front office did, but other than that, I think, you know, and Bryce Young obviously can't be on it. I think right. Fitterer is the most on the hot seat right now. And if there's anybody that's going to get fired soon, oh, yeah. um, I, I think it could be Fitterer. I, I t- I'll say this. If I can see Steve Wills get fired after one year in Arizona, I'm not opposed to it happening to Frank. Now, I'm not calling for it. After a full year, though. After a full that's year. That's what I'm saying. Now, it's not. I don't, for any fan, it's not happening in season. Yeah. It's just not going to yeah. happen. Well, it's no, no, it's not in but, season. It's not but in there season. are people calling yeah. for it. There are people that want it right now. Well, there's no purpose. No, it's not. It doesn't do anything for you. It's, it's no purpose. Um. I think the biggest thing you could do is hand over the play calling. That could probably change a lot. Yes. Which did y'all see that clip? Do you think that's what happened in that interaction? Well, you mean the one when uh, Frank Reich was talking about the meeting with Tepper? No. And how he's well. Which one? It, well, that is interesting. That Tepper and Fitterer were both on the field for Friday practice. That was weird, and it was tense that day. It was a weird air on the practice field when they were both there. But I'm talking about that when they showed they were going to commercial and they and they saw Reich and Brown exchange like talking on the sideline for like a good long time. And it was right around the time where they scored those late touchdowns mm-hmm. and the offense kind of sparked up a little bit. So people are speculating that that was when the coaching duties were handed over. But of course there's no way to there's no way to prove prove it. that I that mean, happened. I, I would say this. I would say this. I'm pretty sure Thomas Brown said on page six, I told you Let's try these right here. Just let me see if I can do it. And they went out and it worked. And then they came back off of commercials. Like, I told you it worked. I'd be interested to see how much of the playbook, like, he has put together. I would be interested to see, like, where his stamp, you know, lies. I'll I'll put it like this. If we see this offense start to look different in the next couple weeks. Like, well, this week, I think it'll happen. With that talk they had on the sideline, I think we'll see something different this week. I I'm I'm highly optimistic that the offense will look different. If if it does, I think it will get overshadowed by like. No, we're gonna lose. Well, I know, so, like, but I don't think you'll even notice. <laughs> I don't think you'll notice it looking different because of just how a aggressive the offense is gonna be from Miami. Right, like so, like, if it's like seventy to twenty four, you won't notice it. But like that's twenty four points we usually don't score. That's so. fair. <laughs> that's fair. No, that's very fair. But I think as far as Federer goes, as we start to wrap up, I mean, I think the, the most jarring thing right now is still this lack of a Brian's Burns deal. It's ridiculous, and per the fact that, like. <laughs> Jonathan Taylor was written off of this team, was going to be, like, sent to Siberia because he couldn't get a contract underway. And whether it was him just seeing the writing on the wall of seeing Zach Moss literally take his job away, or if it was them going, all right, we can whittle it down. They were able to whittle a deal down with him in the time frame that you still have not been able to get anything off the board from Ryan Burns. Who's played. Who has played and had a sack in almost every game. He's four for five games, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. And yep. and for all these people that saying yep. he's checked out and he's doing it and he's flopping on purpose, you're kidding yourselves. You're trying to write him off so that no. you don't feel bad about it when he gets traded off. He's not doing that. If he did, he'd be sitting out right now and would not be playing. Right. The entire defensive unit looks bad. I mean, J.C. Jackson literally wouldn't tie his shoes because he didn't want to play in in, in Los Angeles. That's what flopping and holding out is. Right. Like Brian Burns is not. He's not wasting any of his time. That's not the kind of guy to do that. So stop that. Well, here's what he's idea. doing. Here's what he's doing. He's boosting his. He's boosting his draft. He cap. is. He's doing the same thing Reddick did. He's boosting his draft cap. He's doing the exact same thing Reddick did. He's about to get traded. Yeah. He's gonna ball out. He's gonna say no. I'm not signing that. And we're gonna for. We're gonna we're gonna be forced to trade him. And I was so close to getting the jersey too. And we're gonna try. We're gonna trade him for a late first round pick. And then we're gonna go pick a wide receiver out of Utah State that nobody's ever heard of because he's six five. We got one from Utah he's State. Got right a couple now. Right, bro. Yeah. 
Look at we're 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 two for two on Utah yeah, where State. Where is he though? We're two for two on Utah Utes uh, wide receivers there. Wide is good. He probably need to play too. At this point. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're gonna get we're gonna get Muhammad Jr. I can't with you tonight, huh? I can't with you. Tonight. We're gonna get we're gonna get we're gonna, get, we're gonna draft Muhammad Sr. Muhammad Senior. Man, or junior. play all Sorry. them boys, man. Play everybody's on that practice squad, bro. They need to get some burn. I need to figure out who can play. Bring Charleston Rambo back. I need it. <laughs> Bring no. it back. Yes. That boy. Where's Tariq Cohen? Where's Tariq? Dude, Cohen? I don't even know. Can somebody tell me what I don't. I don't. Somebody know. tell me what Tariq Cohen is. That was an. Like, that was an. Can we get a speedster? That was an Aggie pick. Uh, to, he should be playing. He should be playing. He should be doing something, bro. I'll be honest. Kick, do like kick return. He should be punt doing return. kick return. Kick return and punt return. Yeah. Punt return. There's no reason for him to not be there. Smith Marset is obviously not mm-hmm. it. You're not gonna have a. You shouldn't have a Visca back there for your kick returns or punt returns. Really? No, you shouldn't. He's not gonna he, like that full head of steam is not what like you know starting off of that acceleration is not what he needs. He needs to pick up that full head of steam. So yeah, you're right. There's no reason Tariq Cohen should not be the one doing that stuff. I don't understand why you bring him in for that. Like, he's not a practice squad guy with the team that we have right now. He is on any other team. Well, but how, like, well, how, well, how the backfield looks, he would be a nice change of pace. Honestly. Right. I know Spencer Brown is still sitting on the practice squad, and I think Cam Peoples is still sitting on the practice squad. You've got, like, at this point, start, like, routing into practice squad guys. Like, you need to try something. You're 0-5. Do we have any offensive linemen on the practice squad? They all keep getting me, injured. any offensive linemen anywhere? They all keep getting injured. Hey, man. But, oh, Brock Thornton, Brock Morton. He got uh, injured. He got, damn. I mean. Tecklenburg. Can we call Khalil? Is Khalil around? Can we call Khalil? Man, it's Gross. Can we time. call him? Kurt Irvin got cut from another squad. Damn. He got picked up and cut. I, it's Ooh, just, damn. I don't. I just, I just, so like we, I'm not even gonna do X factors. We talked about it before the thing. I'm not even gonna do X factors for the Dolphins. There's my, I, I'm survival of tips. X factor. Yeah, you know, X factor. You know, we do like our, what's our X factor? Don't get scored be? seventy. That's what I'm saying. We're gonna do survival tips. What's your survival tip for outlasting triple digit points against the Dolphins? Uh, hey, ball control. <laughs> if you want to be a run heavy team, be a run heavy team this week. Hey, this is the time. If you ever want to implement the triple option in the NFL, dog, bro, run the hell out that wing tee, bro. I might do a reverse Miami. Just kneel every play. I'm going to be honest with you, bro. This oh, is a running man. ball, bro. Don't even, put, don't even think about oh. passing. That's what, I, I, w- I wouldn't. I, you, you get, I, I don't even know. I, I don't even know. This is, what I, this, is what I, this is what I say. This week, defense, stop anything that moves. I don't care what it is. The water boy, the coach on the sideline, tackle them all. You got to tackle them all. You, you, don't, you don't know who's got the ball. Just tackle them all. Offense, Bryce, for God's sake, just let it rip. Yeah. I don't care what the coaching staff tells you to do. Let it rip. Just play ball. Just for one Sunday, look comfortable. For one Sunday, go out there and just enjoy being an NFL player. Your team sucks, but just enjoy being an NFL team. I mean, an NFL player. Because that's what's so. And just try not to let 70 get scored on. I mean, just don't let 70. Don't let us get 71 or 72. 69, I can live with. Cause that's what just, 71, 72, I can't. That's what's so disheartening about this all is it's like telling a, you know, a kid that Santa Claus don't exist. We're seeing like the innocence drain from Bryce Young as each week goes on. He starts like more and more just de- just not enjoying himself and not enjoying football. Like it was one thing with Cam, like, you know, if he was upset, it was over something he did and like you understood. But like Bryce Young just looks, it looks drained every week. He get, It's just like the responses are just like – worse and worse and like he's holding he's doing like he's putting on a master class of like humility and like accepting what's happening and like just trying to roll with the punches in terms of like how a rookie quarterback does that kind of stuff like you you can't argue how he's handling all of it but it is just ridiculous to watch i'm ready to start blaming people bro honestly. yeah honestly <laughs> we can be vindictive <laughs> <laughs> like we give you, I'm, we're coming for people's heads right now. We got you, Bryce. Hey, start pointing fingers. We got you, Bryce. Don't you God, worry about bro, it. I, I promise you, I will not change if you point the fingers. It, it was him. It was him. <laughs> <laughs> he called. He told it. me to do it. He told at me to point, do it. At this point, like it's seriously, pull the because look at Justin Fields did it, and now he's on the come up. Yeah, he's starting. Look, to, he said, "Look at my coaching isn't great, and now they're winning games." Thanks, ch- look, game. We- yeah, when you start putting people on the spot, bro, I think I feel like things change. Like, bro, like, nah, he's the, terrible. The desperation starts to come out, and that's what, <laughs> like, that's what the team lacks. There's just no desperation. It's just kind of acceptance of everything that's happening and just kind of going along with it. But 
like I said, we'll see what happens on Sunday. Uh, it's I'm I'm not excited. This is a, uh, this is a, I, every week I'm like, all right, you know, I'm a little more excited. Like, let's go. Come on, keep going. No, this week I'm absolutely depressed. Yeah, I'm only watching these games to do this podcast, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Don't say that. <laughs> no, bro, it's bad, bro. Number, I have no energy to watch these games, bro. True, truthfully, not. So you not bad. keep pounding. You not keep pounding. You keep scratching. I'm gonna keep going to keep bed. Pounding, you keep scratching. Keep doing. <laughs> bro, good God. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna keep watching. Oh gosh! And until we start getting at least some sort of positive signs, we gotta keep waiting and keep pounding. 